This episode of It's All Greek to Me is brought to you by our premium corporate partner, Lavendus Lawyers. Today's episode of It's All Greek to Me, we meet a character that is very, very colourful. Sometimes controversial, but all I know is that this guy has a heart of gold. He's a fourth generation fruit and veg guy. He works really, really hard and comes from a beautiful family. Let's go meet him. The Kapiris family farm is out at Two Wells. Not only have they got amazing grounds and a beautiful home, but look at this statue. It's a Theodonis himself, John Capiris. Now, you've got to explain to me. Yalla. 20 grandchildren, 24 great-grandchildren. Yes. How is it that your grandparents have got a statue or a sculpture of you right here? Look at this thing. <laughs> Mate, they wanted to see me every single day, so they thought, we're going to get a sculpture carved out just like little Johnny, <laughs> so at least we can get to see him every single day while they're sitting here watching TV. How does something like this end up in your family home? My uncle was going regularly to Fiji and um, he thought he'll buy his parents a present. That's what he came home That's, with. Uh, yeah, they shipped a fair bit it of, over. A fair bit of excess baggage there. That's a fair And what bit. I noticed is that it fits perfect and it's in a sunken floor. Yep. They actually had to build this room basically around this monster. They obviously couldn't fit it in. It would have gone through the roof. Yeah, that's what they had to do. The island my grandfather comes from is in the Aegean Sea. Um, it's a little island called Hios, not overly populated. Where we came from, I think the population's about 14 now. Back in the day, like in the 40s, it was thriving, probably about 2,000 people. My grandfather originally came here in 1948, virtually came here with one suitcase, as you hear of many stories. And there was 11 in the family. Some did go to America, and um, obviously the rest came to Australia. And then my grandfather went and worked in a milk factory. And then from a milk factory, he went, worked in a glass factory, and also for GMH. I think probably about 1951, he um, purchased some property here out in Two Wells, where we are today. And he started growing tomatoes, he planted his olive trees, and virtually living off the land. So then he started carting his own produce to Melbourne. And he virtually started two businesses, one in Victoria and one here. So when my grandfather was 23, so he would have been here five or six years, my grandfather bought my grandmother out. Well, she was 18 when she came over. The bow took, took 28 days to come to Australia. I come for, to get married here, to make my life here. <laughs> then him and my grandmother moved from Adelaide to Melbourne. Then they stayed there for many, many years. Then when my grandfather retired, he came back to the farm, which my father was running, in back in 1982 or 1983. Then that's when they remodeled the house that he built in 1951 to what it is today, and retired here. And he actually started a poultry business on the farm where we've got quails and um, uh, spatchcocks and what have you. So that sort of kept him busy as well. Mate. Huge grounds, yep. unbelievable. Right here next to your house, you've got something like a, a lion's cage. Show me, what have you got in here, man? It's like something you'd see out of the zoo, this thing. <laughs> there's pears in there, George, apples, there's lime trees, there's quinces, there's mint, there's everything you possibly could imagine in there. Originally, they used to have nets, everything, and then one thing led to another, then all of a sudden, you got this. Addition, I, I can see there's different bits and pieces. So oh, yeah. it must have started pretty small and then we need a bit extra. It's we evolved. need a bit extra. <laughs> it's evolved, definitely. Unbelievable. It's pretty. Keeps the birds out. Yeah. I've got to try this, man. I've got, I've got to try this, man. I've got to try it. Look at this. This is old school stuff, Georgie. This is old school. You don't see this in the markets, mate. Taste that. <laughs> Fully organic. 
my grandfather and grandmother had six children. He had five boys and one girl. Two brothers stayed here, which is my father, Con and Jimmy. They actually stayed here in Adelaide to take care of the farming side of things. And the rest of the family, which is the three boys and the, the sister, uh, went to Melbourne and they took care of selling the, the tomatoes in the uh, Victorian markets. I was like 10 years old when my grandfather came back to Adelaide to retire. So we were always here, you know, I was uh, working on the farm, helping dad, you know, school holidays, this, that, the other. I had most of my childhood with my grandparents, which was really, really good, you know, something to enjoy. Family, big family. Six children, five boys and one daughter, uh, 20 grandchildren and 24 great grandchildren. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful, bravo, there. She has, as we just heard, five children. Six. Twins, s let's go again. <laughs> Six children. Sorry, it is. Can I also say the cutala? Yes. Sorry. Six children, 20 grandchildren, and 24. 24 great 24 grandchildren. Great grandchildren. She has to know how to cook. We are about to do one of her family's favourites, Yuvarlakia, beautiful meatball soup. Can you have it Show us how it's done. Fix it with your meat. Come with your meat. Beautiful short grain rice. The cream of the onion. The parsley. Yep. This is one of those comfort things. The egg. The egg. Meatball soup is one of those soups that Yuvarlakia, all of us grew up loving soups in general. Whenever we're not feeling well, you've got the avgo lemon or the egg lemon sauce. Alataki. Salt. Seasoning it with salt and pepper. We have these ingredients. She's going to mix those together. Now, so that the scallions are mixed. Yes. And then the canes are like that. See. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ah, and a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. Yes. Beautiful. And this is the photographer in your studio's room. Oh, and in the photo, it's her husband, her late husband there. When you weren't feeling well. A yaya or a mum or an auntie would come past and say, Ella, I've made some avgo lemon for you, you're instantly better. We're going to put a little bit of water in here for her as well. A little bit, get a little torizi. Bossa Tetya, how many of these have you made in your life? Uh, <laughs> you can't count. Okay. No? Because <laughs> except that we were a big family, we were also people who lived here, but we were also people who lived here in the farms. Not only does she cook this as one of her family favourites, but having the farms and stuff, right back, dating back from mid-1950s, all the people that used to work on the farms used to be starving and there wasn't the old cafe restaurant that people could eat. So she'd basically be in here cooking for them. And uh, it would... Breakfast, lunch and night time, three... Three meals a day. Yeah. Now what's very important is that when doing this, you want your hands so that the, the meatballs don't stick to your hands. Now... We're rolling them, look at this. Once they're ready, we've got a pot of water. We season it with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, pepper, and then you gently place them in so it doesn't splash up onto your hand. Yeah. This is how simple this recipe is. Simple, I say, with a lot of respect because it is just so tasty, but the basics are quite often the recipes that last the test of time. What we're going to do here is we're basically putting the meatballs in. We're going to put the lid on it to bring the water back to a boil because it's cooled down because the cold meatballs are going into it. Then once it comes to a boil, you take off the lid and let it simmer for about 25 minutes or so. Switch it off. It is cooked. It's seasoned well. You can give it a bit of a taste. Then we will go on to doing the avro lemon. Meatballs are cooked. They are done. Look at this. Oh, oh yes. Now, the famous avo lemono. Kiria Vienes avo lemono. Firstly, we crack the eggs. Then we're going to whisk them lightly. So once we've whisked these eggs, we're going to add the lemon juice, the juice of two lemons that we've squeezed at the better. The lemon juice is added. Now we're putting a little bit of water to dilute it. Oh, there. Yeah. So she's going to pour the hot soup, so the stock into this as I'm whisking it. Slowly tempering this egg lemon sauce. 
this is the best part. You look at this. Now we're doing this and moving the pot as we pour the egg into it. Ligo, ligo. So we're doing it bit by bit so that we don't split the egg. So we just slowly add it a bit more. That is the ultimate. Look at that. Wow. Only one thing left to do, apart from Nasefthiso, because it's amazing, Yasta Heriasu, Yasta Heriasu. Honestly, these hands, how many people they're fed, but it is time to eat. Fia prepe na tofame. It's time to eat. Oh, we, we, we can't handle it anymore, Ella. <laughs> I left school when I was in year 11, so um, well, I virtually finished year 11, and I said to my father, I said, look, I'm not really keen on school. I said, I, I really want to come in and help you on the farm. So basically for a few years, I was here helping my dad. I reckon the early 2000s, I did decide to, to take my wife and myself down to Melbourne, and we actually worked uh, with my uncles, the other side of the business, for um, nine years. And my wife really wanted to come back to Adelaide, so we said, look, We'll go back to Adelaide. I didn't really want to go back on the farm, you know, so I said to my dad, I said, look, I love you. I said, but I really need to open up my own fruit shop. And that's what we've done. We opened up a, a, a string of fruit shops um, 13 years ago and uh, sold them off. Um, so now we've just got the one fruit shop, which is St. Bernard's Fruit and Veg. I don't know if you've been to John's Fruit and Veg shop on St. Bernard's Road, it's a beauty. Not only fruit and veg, but deli goods and a Greek and Italian kitchen as well. We just made the magnificent Juverlaka with Kiria Evgenia. Juverlaka. It's a heavy, beautiful dish, uh, so you need, you need something light. We're going to do some kurabiedes. They are butter-based shortbread. We are going to do them out of a pack. Bake with George. It's a line that we've brought out. Could I be there? There's a few different traditional lines. Because so you're telling me this is your box. <laughs> you That's like... wonderful. And look, there's a photo of Yoro as well. <laughs> Bravo. So Nico, who has never done kurabiedas before, surprising, because you're always in the kitchen. But you've never mates... done it from your box. No, no, you haven't. We have, Nico. Yes. We have an icing uh, mix. This is for the dusting. And we have, which has come out of the my box. Yeah. And we have our icing for the mixture. So what we're going to do, we've got Ooh. some softened butter that's come to room temperature. Then we have our icing sugar, which we are going to pour. This is actually probably the most simple dessert that you can do. And it is a recipe that has lasted the test of time and been handed down from genera the generations yes. above. What I want you to do now is Gently yes. with our state of the art uh, mm -hmm. mixer. Now, he got that, he went and rudely grabbed it straight off of the VCR next to my ghetto blaster. Exactly. All right. right next to <laughs> I had to get in my DeLorean to get there. Yes. We're going to cream the butter and icing mixture. The more you cream it, the lighter and shorter it's going to become. So, this is the difference between a shortbread and a, a biscuit, for example. Now, you can definitely do this but at what? home with your own ingredients. Okay. But, but, what happens here, this is like, um, look, this is, this uh, baking has been in my family professionally for four generations. And this is a way for my, the Bake with George team, which is myself with the family members that are supporting me through this. We are giving you guys four generations of traditional flavors in your own home. So we're basically holding your hand and making something like Cura Biedas. You can't go wrong. Three steps, you're done. We've whisked and creamed our butter, icing sugar and vanilla sugar. Mm -hmm. Now we have our almonds and our flour mix over here, which what we're going to do, we can just simply put that in there. Perfect. Just give it a quick mix. Mix it up and then what we're going to do is put it together so that we combine it, it comes to a beautiful dough. Now, can I what, go in there? What you do, we've got the bench my hands. here, we're ready to go. Balto de pera on the bench. Yep. yep. We're going to fold it through Bring so it that together. it's combined well. Make sure it's mixed properly so we don't have any flour bits there. Then you want to flatten it to about a centimetre high. Now, depending on how you cut them, this particular size batch, you're going to get around 30 mini curabiedes, so perfect little ones if you have visitors coming over. The smell of shortbread is the ultimate in the pastry kitchen. You don't have a cookie cutter. <laughs> get yourself a glass. 
Yeah. And then I'm going to show you, and then you're going to finish yeah. them okay, off. What done. you want to do okay. is cut them off like that. Yes. So you get that first bit. So yeah. you've got a round yeah. one. It's not a crescent-shaped cookie cutter. Then you use it, and you cut through that same area. Take that out, and you put it on here, and you have your crescent. That's it. Next one, cut it. You put it on here, you have your crescent. That's how you do it. Okay. There it is. Bravo. 30 mini could Ella. Ella. Perfect. In the oven, 170 degrees for about 20 minutes until they're brown. 170 degrees, 175 degrees. You can be guided by color. All, All right, right then. Okay. Smell that, mate. I know. All I know. Now, we want to wait a few minutes. Let's wait a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Let it cool down. Okay. A few minutes have gone past. Now, a trick for you guys. When you are icing your kurabiere, so your almond-based shortbreads, what you want to do, instead of getting the icing, to make the icing sugar that you're dusting go a lot further, instead of icing and wasting all of your icing on the tray, bring them together so they're next to each other. That way you create less surface area. And now what you might do, that's it, bravo. Just to, don't be shy. Could I be at this icing sugar? Absolutely magnificent. It's great. Christmas time. Yeah. You do not see a household of Greek heritage, no. Baron, yeah. without could I be at this. You have the most. Nico, time to taste. Uh -huh. Enjoy it. <laughs> Some things never change. Short? Mm. Short. Not you, not you, the, the could I be at. I mean. Could I be <laughs> it's short. It's short, meaning it's got the appropriate amount of butter to, to dry mixture ratio. Could I be at this? you got to try them at home. I've got three kids. They're, they're influenced um, a little bit, but uh, look, probably my fault. My wife's half Italian, half Australian. We, we didn't really push the kids hard enough to sort of carry that Greek tradition, which I'm a little bit disappointed with myself now. So we had to sacrifice a few things, you know? We, we go to as many Greek events as possible. Your Glendies, your this, the, that. They say they're Australian. We are Australian, you know? But I like to have that little bit of Greek heritage, you know? I, I like to keep that tradition alive. So every now and again, I'll throw some Greek music on or do something, just something to say, you know, this is where your roots are from. I'm happy uh, very much um, in Australia because I start a new life, family, and do everything, the business we have and everything, and I'm very happy. Yeah, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? <laughs> I now understand why it's a family favourite. Absolute magic. Mm. Thank you, Thea. Guys, see you next time. <laughs>